Hello everyone, I want to show you um, going from Lightroom to Nix HDR FX Pro which is now available for order. Um, if you highlight your brackets in Lightroom and you go to export and go down to the Nix drop down you'll see HDR FX Pro. Now they give you JPEG and TIFF they don't actually handle the raw files itself from Lightroom. Um, in TIFF, you can choose your format. I use Profoto RGB when I do my HDRs. No compression for me. I want the highest possible quality from each raw file. Since uh, it is going to put it into a TIFF, I don't want to lose anything. My bit depth, leave it at 16. Don't go down to 8. You want the, the most bit depth uh, for your HDRs. Uh, if you're going to use JPEG for whatever reason, uh, you s still again have the sRGB, Adobe RGB, or the Pro Photo RGB available. And uh, again, because you're use going from RAW files to a JPEG, you try to stay at the highest possible quality. So instead of me uh, having you sit here, I already loaded the, my set of brackets in HDRFX Pro, and I'm going to bring that up now. Okay, so here is HDRFX Pro. I have not done anything. This is the first uh, default view. Uh, this is actually the first time I'm actually opening HDRFX Pro. So as I'm looking at this uh, for the first time, you're looking at this for the first time. So uh, looking over here, just like Nick's other software, we have a lot of different presets already ready to go uh, in order to use and. Just looking at them, I see some that I don't really like. I see some that I do like. Um, well, this one looks really interesting. Monoco monochrome contrasty. Let's click that, and that's not bad. I actually like the processing. I don't like how dark um, the buildings are, but this is something that can be fixed. And looking over here, you do have Nick's lovely U point control. So uh, let's say I want to add a control point over the building. And again, this is the first time, first time I'm looking at this uh, at the application. So there you go. I'm actually lightening it just enough for my liking. And also keep in mind that um, we could also uh, do some more post-processing after the actual HDR effects pro processing. I could bring this into Nick software, I can bring this into on one photo tools, I can bring it into anything that I really want to, or just do it all in masking in Photoshop, um, which would take a little bit longer. But so the first thing I notice uh, about HDR effects pro is it actually handles black and white HDR very well, which I'm kind of impressed about that. So now let's say we want to switch the uh, we're going to switch the preset a little bit. Postcard Paradise. I wonder if it's going to lose the U points when I switch this. It does not. It keeps it. Okay, but we're going to get rid of these. All right. So this is um, a little bit too surreal for me, but uh, again, I'm just playing gives you an idea of the software. It's pretty quick seeing the previews and you do have the loop on the bottom if you look over here you have the loop. Um, they're also giving vignetting controls, level controls, HDR method. There's a lot of a lot of different uh, a lot of different options in here and you got your full tonal compression. So that's really nice. What um, and of course, because it is Nick, they give you that lovely little slider preview, so you can see it before and after. So that's really neat. I love Nick for doing that. All right, so let's see what else we got over here. These presets, some of them are, are a little bit out there. Some of them are not so bad. Single exposure. Now let's go back to the top. Hey, you can make it look like an old painting. That's pretty neat. If you wanted to. Uh, take your photo and make a sketch out of it this is this would be a pretty good painting if you wanted to do that but I don't want to do that vibrant details and color still too out there for me 
So not all the presets am I really enjoying, but not such a big deal. So here we go. Here's a very basic one. So then you could you could bring in some saturation, take out some saturation, lighten it up. Um, let's see what we can do. And again, I've never used this before, so subtle. <clears throat> wow. Okay, so it's it's definitely different to use compared to photomatics. Um, it'll take a little bit of getting used to if you were switching, but if you've never used a, an HDR software, it looks like they're giving a lot of functionality. One thing I don't see, let's see, alignment and ghost reduction. They don't give you any manual control over ghost reduction but it is something you can do in Photoshop so that's not the end of the world um, let's see let's see another theme realistic strong All right, definitely my favorite out of all of them so far let's see realistic balanced I actually like realistic strong better because I like the clouds from the preset. I like what it did with the clouds. Um, I would, however, add some viewpoint and brighten this up just like I did for the black and white. Yeah. Much better. Not too... There we go. Just enough to give it a little more color, or a little more uh, brightness, I mean. Anyway, so that gives you a quick idea of, of HDR Effects Pro. That's my first look, and it's pretty neat. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. They, uh, I know they took a lot of time to build it, and I am impressed that it works. And, I mean, some of the presets, not so much, but this one, for instance, actually looks really good. Um, and the fact that it utilized the U-point, I think, is my favorite feature about the whole thing. I'd have to really go into the... Um, uh, adjustments to really play with them to see how well they do but um, there you go and I'd like to know what you think of HDR FX Pro if you've gotten your hands on it yet so comment let me know thanks for watching